Hey guys, it's Andy from the Blackstone Griddle Recipes and Videos group. Gonna do a simple video today. We're gonna actually do this for the Great Griddle Off of 2023. Pretty excited about this one. This is gonna be my breakfast entry. Could double as a dessert, but we're gonna enter this one as the breakfast. So today we're gonna make, it's pretty easy, a French toast, traditional, but we're also gonna incorporate that into a Bananas Foster. So we're gonna get a little bit crazy today with some Bananas Foster to do some of that on the griddle, do some flambe. We're gonna see how that works. So I'm pretty excited about this one. Uh, we'll get you started here and show you uh, what our ingredients are gonna be. All right, so for our French toast, it's gonna be pretty easy. Um, I went ahead and I picked up this brioche cinnamon twist bread. So it's already got a cinnamon flavor in it. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of extra ingredients we gotta to add to this, other than our half and half and our eggs. We're gonna mix that up real good, let this soak in there. And then once we've got that done, um, like so we're gonna let that sop up in the bread so we can put that onto the griddle as far as the bananas fosters go obviously we need the bananas uh, we've got a little bit of nutmeg some cinnamon some light brown sugar and then lots of butter and i've had this sitting out so it's starting to get softened and then of course we're going to need the flambe so we've got this torch lighter that we're going to use and today we're going to use Sailor Jerry uh, spiced rum. Now this one, the reason why I picked this one out is it's got 46% alcohol, so that's 92 proof. You really want to try to be above 90 to get a good flame. So that's why I picked this one out at the store. Um, so we've got everything we need to get it started. So let's get going. All right, first thing we got here, we're using half and half. So it's milk and cream. Gonna go ahead and get that, get a nice good layer in the bottom here. It's about good. So it's probably about half an inch of liquid, um, which this is a pint. So I used about half of this, so about um, eight ounces or one cup. I'm going to go ahead and put the eggs into here. We get our whisk, then we break the yolks first, and let's get this mixed in. All right, now that we've got that incorporated in there, we're gonna add, even though it's a cinnamon bread, we're gonna add just a little bit of cinnamon into this. All right, so for our cinnamon bread, uh, we're first just gonna get it out of the container. Now we're gonna wanna do this about one inch squares. Now this is a, a knife, has about one inch width on it. So I can use that as kind of a measuring to know kind of where I wanna go. And then once you start to get a slice or two, you can kind of go with what you want. There you go. So we got two, four, six, eight, nine slices out of this loaf of bread. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and take the, the custard that we made. And we're going to go ahead and start soaking some of these pieces that are double-sided. And get them right in there. About four at a time. I'm gonna do the first side pretty quick and then move directly to the second side pretty fast. And we're gonna let the second side soak longer than the first side. All right, so far it's pretty traditional, just doing a normal French toast. Uh, we're gonna go over here and move over to the Blackstone now, because now while that's soaking, that bread's soaking, I wanna go ahead and start getting the banana fosters ready. 
uh, to get our griddle started. Uh, the first thing I like to do, obviously, is just make sure I've got a nice clean griddle surface. So we're gonna scrape this up just a little bit. Get any leftover debris may have been on there from last night's supper. All right, so whenever I'm working with breads, I like to put a little water on here just to make sure there's no extra residual flavors. Getting, getting some of this brown stuff that's off of there that might have been just extra from last time you cooked. But I like to get all that off. This is what discolors your breads and your eggs. Alright, so for this recipe, we're going to use three bananas. So what I like to do is I like to cut the back of it, so away from the angle. I like to cut the back of it, and then you can just peel it straight forward like that. And to make it easy for you to slice, you can just slice it right in the peel. So I just like to cut it right in there. You can get really in there, use your fingers, it's not going to hurt you. You can use your own banana peel as your cutting board. But you can really get in there and get a nice good slice. All right, so this is where things are gonna start getting a little bit more speedy. Um, like I said, I do have my griddle on low. It's still gonna cook pretty fast though with being on low melting butter and doing bananas. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got my griddle actually on a little bit of a slant to the left. I wanna try to keep the liquid and keep that stuff over here at the edge so that I've got something I can work with. So we're gonna take about half this butter. Actually, I've got two sticks. We're gonna do a full stick of butter on here. And then we're going to incorporate into that about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And then about a half teaspoon of cinnamon. We're eyeballing. Can't guarantee you that's exactly what that was, but it's just an eyeball. So now what we want to do is we want to start getting this butter melted down just a little bit. And you can just start to see that it's starting to bubble. And then we're gonna add the bananas right into the mixture. Now the goal is we're gonna get the bananas flat. This is gonna take about three minutes per side to kind of get going, uh, to get them kind of soft. Now these are just ripe bananas. I bought them pretty new at the store. If you don't wanna buy bananas that have been sitting around for three, four days, starting to get brown on you, you want them to be a little bit hard because they're gonna get mushy when you put them into the heat. And so that's kind of our goal is to make sure we keep these nice and liquidy, covered up in that juice on the bottom. And then we're gonna to go to the top. All right, now while that's working, it's gonna take that a minute, but we've got our French toast now that we can start to work on the other side. So I've got a paper towel ready because I'm gonna get my fingers in there, get my fingers a little dirty. Now this is pretty soggy, but that's what we want. Those bananas in there, keep that liquid moving in on. We're gonna flip them all over, make sure we get it coated on both sides. So now we're just gonna keep them moving a little bit. Keep that liquid in there, don't let it run away from you.
Okay, so our French toast is halfway done. I just put these on there, so that's not even close, but we're gonna do this one first, and then we're gonna do this one second. Let's go ahead and put these over again. Now you can see they're starting to get mushy, but they're also starting to get crispy from being in the sauce, sauteed sauce. But this is where the magic is gonna happen too. All right, so we want about three ounces of our liquid. So we're gonna take the three ounces here. I'm gonna go ahead and put these before I do it. Just about done. Actually, we're gonna pull these off, then we'll do it. Turn real quick. Alright. And we're gonna take about three ounces of this and pour it right over it. bit of flame in there it's hard to see it Do it one more time cooks out, we know that it's going to be done. So I plug this up. So we've got the bananas foster. We're gonna go ahead and uh, church this up a little bit. I've got some fresh made whipped cream, some strawberries we're gonna add to this as well. And we'll get a picture here in just a second. Okay. Are you good? All right, so there we go. There's the finished product, guys. It looks pretty amazing. So we're gonna dig into this one and see how it tastes.